Hi, my name's Chase Hale. Personally, I believe that every person put in any type of management slash leadership role should have to embarrass themselves. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to The Hollercast, the podcast produced by The Holler Creative in Corbin, Kentucky, whose mission is to bring hope and opportunity back to the Appalachian region. I'm your host, James Schweitzer. We're back in the studio again with our very own Chase Hale. What's up, guys? So we've had a lot of guests from Bright Kentucky on here, um, which is a program put on by Leadership Kentucky for young leaders in the region. And Chase just graduated from the program a couple weeks ago, so... Round of applause for him. <laughs> so we're just going to ask him about it, the program as a whole, and see what it was like and what he what he got out of it. So Chase, what was... Oh, icebreaker question. Mm. You've never got to answer it. It's true. We don't really need to break the ice, but we'll give you the chance to say uh, what your favorite gas station snack and drink is. Uh, my favorite gas station snack is, grossly enough, a Slim Jim, um, which last time I had a Slim Jim, I was able to read the ingredients and find out that it is full of um, pork, beef, and mechanically separated chicken. So it's really tasty, and it's mechanically separated. So at least I know somebody's hands weren't all over it. <laughs> Those things don't separate themselves, you know? Yeah. And then favorite drink is a green monster energy drink. Um, I'm very partial to the green ones, not the blue ones, not the white ones, not the ugly ones. Green. That's green, not only green. You can really taste the chemicals in the green ones. For sure. A lot of taurine, I think it's in that, and uh, ginseng, and <laughs> mm, the other stuff. words that they put on the front of it that I don't know what they are. <laughs> At least you're reading labels, though. For sure. At least has got to be the cause of that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so Chase, um, the graduation was like a week ago, a week and a half ago, two weeks? Yeah, something like know. that. What did you do at the graduation? What was it like, the whole ceremony? Oh, uh, the graduation ceremony took place in Moorhead. Um, it was at the beautiful uh, Moorhead Convention Center, I guess is what it's called. I'm not really sure. But... Um, not only did we graduate that day, we had to present our final uh, projects to um, the Leadership Kentucky folks as well as several sponsors and just people that were there to give us advice and to um, hopefully partner with us in sponsoring the projects. So anyways, we went through that first. There were probably nine, I think nine groups of us that um pitched our projects which are supposed to be something that um, something of a service project that we put together over our time with um, the Bright group and we sorted out by region at first but then it pretty much just turned into being whatever we were most interested in as the group that we joined and focused on the work to do with it so my group was a couple people from Corbin, London area and then some from uh, deeper in eastern Kentucky and our um, project was to better promote Daniel Boone, uh, Daniel Boone country which is the region um, that really makes up eastern Kentucky so it's you know Wheeler County over to I think Pikeville and back um, so it pretty much full eastern Kentucky is represented in Daniel Boone country and um, you know it's full of attractions you know natural attractions and others that people haven't heard of and that uh, there aren't a lot of pictures of and you know county to county we tend to rep our local tourism uh, so you know if you're from Willie County you talk about Cumberland Falls but um, there are so many things that um, aren't well talked about in our region and so um, our goal in the project was to make Daniel Boone Country more of a tourist destination by better highlighting all that through a digital medium. Mm-hmm. Um, so new photography, videography, um, digital advertising, which luckily the hauler knows how to do those things. So <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and then, sorry, the uh, graduation portion of that. <laughs> so we pitched our projects, ate lunch, and then um, we all got our names called one by one and got to receive a plaque um, saying we complete the program and then take a picture with um, the Leadership Kentucky president as well as Elmer Whitaker who was the past chair of Leadership Kentucky and also the um, brainchild behind Bright program and then also the current Leadership Kentucky chair, um, Teresa Hale. So we um, got to take a picture with them and um, get congratulated from them and then uh, listen and cheer on our other 
participants as well. So. That's awesome. There's 50 of you guys? Yeah, 50 started the class with us, and I think 40... Eight graduated, but only 47 were at the graduation ceremony. So one got stuck on a plane. She wasn't able oh, to be man. with us. <laughs> and then two people had to bow out throughout the program just mm-hmm. for other um, other responsibilities. Yeah. 47 is not bad, though. No. So I think the first session you went on this, like, cool hiking scavenger hunt up at the gorge. And then I know in the office you were talking about making, like, collages or cutting out pictures of a <laughs> magazine or something. So it sounds like you did a lot of cool... Uh, interesting activities and stuff so what was your favorite what activity from the program stood out to you the most um we didn't do a lot of things that like i hate to say weren't fun um or were fun but we so obviously our first session was just us getting to know each other and getting like oriented with the program um so that one was Mm -hmm. some team building stuff and we got to you know like you said take a hike in uh, red river gorge up to the natural bridge which ended up probably being the most fun thing we did because it was pouring the rain we paired off in groups we were all trying to race to the top so Mm -hmm. that was a blast um but alternatively just the whole program um they took us on a lot of field trips and um took us from here to there and allowed you know speakers that we wouldn't have normally heard um talk to us about things that were relevant to you know our push to grow appalachia so um there were a lot of things to do only a couple of them were really fun but all of them all in all were really interesting i guess Mm -hmm. is the best way to say that yeah for sure there's five sessions, correct? Yes, five, I believe. Uh, all over southeastern Kentucky. So which was your favorite session and why? Um, so unfortunately, I didn't get to make it to the Pikeville session, which was unanimously pretty much everybody else's favorite. <laughs> you missed um, that. And yeah, so I missed that one. That was our second session. I think that's the one where people really started to get to know each other and it'll be a little more comfortable. Um, so I hate that I missed that one, but... I really enjoyed the last two sessions together, which was um, Richmond, and we made our way to Frankfurt and spent a day at Boone Tavern. And then um, the last session was we stayed in Lexington the first night, went to Louisville for the Kentucky Entrepreneurship Hall of Fame, um, got to tour Toyota, Mm -hmm. and um, then we finished up in Moorhead at the university and whatnot. So the last two sessions were a blast just for um, where we were and you know, we spent a lot more time together, I guess, because we knew our time was coming to an end. So mm-hmm. we were we were really close, and yeah. uh, just the last two sessions collectively were a lot of fun. So I, I enjoyed those the most. The first one was fine. It was just you know a lot a really awkward because we were yeah. all trying to get to know each yeah, other. I bet. And uh, I wish I'd made Pikeville though. So mm. oh well, unfortunate for sure. Uh, so what's something cool or encouraging? or surprising that you learned about the region through the program? Um, We talked, I talked about this in my um, first vlog we did for my Bright Sessions, Mm -hmm. and it was, I don't remember the exact statistics now, I'd have to look it up again, but uh, something along the lines of 40 out of, you know, 100 distressed counties in Appalachia, or, you know, a percentage or something like that, come to find out that the majority of those were in Eastern Kentucky, Mm -hmm. and really surprising to see that um, Eastern Kentucky was so, you know, distressed and so much in need of leadership and economic growth and um, I think it really spurred us all along. It was good that they dropped that on us in the first session and um, I think it was a driving force behind a lot of our projects and a lot of the need that we saw, um, especially when you think about, you know, the opioid crisis and everything that has Mm -hmm. Uh, really fractured um, Eastern Kentucky and the coal business going out. So those things being told to us early were really surprising, but also really driving behind um, what we are hoping to accomplish. So um, I would say that was one of the one of the first things that I remember surprisingly deeply. And it was cool to learn, honestly, and it was sad to learn, but um, you know, helpful in the end. Yeah, that is really sad. I think it's like. Um it's cool, though, to know that any work you're doing, like, for economic development or socially, any work you do is, like, for a good cause mm-hmm. because you know how bad that the region needs it. So, like, the work you're doing matters, and it's cool that you can act while knowing that. Yeah. I, I enjoyed knowing that um, Eastern Kentucky was so, you know, 
poor and pitiful in the world's eyes because then if you think about that in correlation to our group and what we have learned and discussed and um, are planning to achieve you think of it as uh, I hate to say a ragtag team of you know <laughs> allies teaming up but it's true where um, not people who are born with a silver spoon in their mouth like uh, a lot of people are with these leadership groups not to say that there's anything wrong with that but say that we all grew up you know in poor households in eastern mm-hmm. kentucky and that's why we had the passion for it yeah so to know that people like us were you know chosen from among however many opted or um, sent in applications for the bright program um that we were chosen because we have a passion for the region we have ideas to help grow it and uh so to think that all those counties are distressed, those are the counties we come from, yeah. and those are the counties that we're hoping to affect with um, our positive leadership that hopefully we all learned through this program. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like you were saying, the whole program is about leadership, and it's put on by Leadership Kentucky. So how, how do you think the program has made you a better leader? Um, we all talked about this pretty exclusively in our group um, because none of us felt that any particular exercise or speaker that we had gave us some, you know, unnerving knowledge that was going to lead us into the future yeah, of leadership. Right. <laughs> but um, that the program as a whole and the speakers that did come in and what they had overcome and what they were presenting to us um, – were the things that we were going to learn from. So the way that they conducted themselves, the things mm-hmm. that they had to, like I said, overcome, um, were things that were going to push us forward and, and show us that we can overcome too or that we already have. So I would say I don't know that I learned one specific trait that would help me as a leader, but um, one thing that really stuck out to me was in his like farewell speech to us, uh, Mr. Whitaker, who is president and CEO of Whitaker Bank, who is super busy and took three days out of every month to spend every moment with us uh, traveling around Eastern Kentucky, which is pretty crazy. But yeah. in his little farewell speech to us, he said that um, several of us had asked him along the way, like, can I hold the door instead of you? Because he always held the door open for us everywhere we went. And uh, he said that he wanted to tell us that the reason behind him positioning himself himself at the door you know this very wealthy man with a very successful banking business Mm -hmm. was because he a wanted to um, show servant leadership to us and the fact that yes he is more successful in his career than we are thus far but he still wants to hold the door open for us Mm -hmm. and secondly he wanted to position himself in a place where he had the opportunity to speak to all 48 or 50 of us that were walking through those doors because Mm -hmm. otherwise like yes he spent three days with us but there's a big group of us and uh, otherwise he wouldn't have had an opportunity to have a face to face with us so Mm -hmm. he wanted to personally invest in each of us even if it was just uh, hello how are you doing at the door yeah um, and so that one really stuck with me just to think that he would take such a or make such a deliberate effort to be involved with us in so many aspects in the big by just being there and in the little by holding the door open for us and saying yeah. hello That's so really cool. um, that would be a lesson I would say I learned is uh, humility and you know a little bit of servant leadership mm-hmm. because that's the way that leaders should act yeah it's really cool you got to see that in action as well rather than just somebody talking about it yeah for Um, sure i think that definitely has a bigger impact on the person who's learning or supposed to be learning these skills just to see it in action rather than like a speaker on a stage telling you to be a servant leader yeah okay final thoughts final thoughts um i would say that one of the biggest things I took away um, kind of goes back to what I just said about humility. Um, personally, I believe that every person put in any type of management slash leadership role should have to embarrass themselves uh, pretty deeply because I know that I've had that um, privilege already in my life as a um, director of operations for the hauler. There have been times that I thought that I was going to be this big boss man and make a big boss man move and, um, you know, demand something or tell somebody I needed this done immediately. And nearly every time those things have backfired and um, made me feel like just a complete imbecile. Um, 
and for good reason because that's not the way that uh, leadership is intended to be. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be a thing where you know, you're the last person out the door. You um, are the first person in the door. You don't care to get your hands dirty. You do the nitty gritty work as well as the big calls because that's what you're called to do as a leader is to uh, be everywhere and do everything and lead by example. So um, mm-hmm. humility is something I take away from the program a lot just because um, I think that was kind of a recurring theme with a lot of the speakers we had was a humbling experience in their career that made them the leader that could get up and speak to us about leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, So humility is something very needed in leadership, and I think, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people haven't been humiliated in their lives (laughs) or had that humbling experience to tell them that they're not better than their employees or they're not better than anyone in general. Um, So that's my big takeaway. It's a final thought. It's a lesson learned. And it is something I will carry with me and hopefully apply to um, all aspects of my life and not just my career. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, brother. Yeah. So thank you to um, Elmer Whitaker. We have said his name a lot. We love him. He um, was amazing for us, and he was the uh, brains behind all of Bright and securing the money and beating on doors to get more money for us. So. Thank you to Mr. Whitaker. Thank you to the Whitaker Foundation for matching funds to the ARC, who's another person I want to thank, um, the Appalachian Regional Commission uh, for a grant that helped fund our project. Um, and then thank you to, I know Save a Lot Food Stores was a big uh, sponsor, and there were several other contributors, but then individually there's also uh, Janice Way, who is our president of Leadership Kentucky, who was with us every day. Uh, our program coordinator, uh, Miss Karen Butcher, who was um, investing in us, you know, all along the way, and then even uh, Madeline Flynn, who is our communications director for um, for Leadership Kentucky, sent us all the emails, kept us updated, took all of her pictures, and uh, yeah, there were, it took it took an army to get us where we needed to be and to uh, keep us wrangled in, but uh, they did it. And uh, once again, just grateful to all the sponsors for um, the Bright program that made it free. And, um, yeah. And I would also say, final thought, too, um, March of 2020, applications are going to go out for the upcoming sessions of Bright with Leadership Kentucky. So be sure to look for applications online on Leadership Kentucky's website and uh, send in your application. It's going to be a rigorous progress. Uh, process I would have to imagine because they said there were quite a few that applied for hours and I would have to imagine there are a lot more now that it's been publicized well so um, get your application in and I really would just recommend the program and to be as receptive as you can to be open to new um, possibilities and be ready to make a lot of friends because I have a lot more friends now (laughs) that's awesome Well, that's all we have for today so um, I just want to personally thank all the we had a handful of bright participants um, come and actually be on the podcast. And I just want to thank all of them for taking the time out of their lives, uh, their busy schedules to do that. Um, I always walked out of the studio feeling really uh, encouraged and inspired. Um, They've got a lot of good stuff going on. Um, So thank you to those people and thank you guys for listening. And we will catch you guys next time on the Hollercast. Cast.